Hey everybody, I wanted to take a moment here and make a video on something that uh, I've seen come up quite a bit to the extent that I wrote a script to create a workaround for it. Um, and so that is in an environment where you have an NPS server. In this case, uh, this NPS server is running the MFA extension and in your network policies maybe this is an mps server you've had for years and years and years and you wanted to add mfa um, to your radius authentication so you installed the mfa extension and everything seems to be working pretty good except you have this weird issue uh, for some users they're getting um like maybe you've got a cisco uh, uh, vpn device and some users are getting in, other users aren't getting in, or maybe they're not being assigned to the right VLANs or whatever it is. And so you did some troubleshooting. Um, ultimately, what you found was, for whatever reason, for some users, we're not sending back the vendor-specific attribute that Cisco needs or whatever the device is that it needs. If you go look inside of your network policy, you can see here we've defined a vendor specific attribute that gets sent back to our radius client uh, when they succeed. So I want to explain to you why that is. Um, in, our, in the document that talks about the NPS uh, MFA extension, it does make a, a mention that you may lose some uh, attributes. Um, and I want to walk through exactly what's happening here so you have a good understanding of what's going on. So, specifically, when you install the MFA extension onto an MPS server, there's certain changes that are going to happen. Uh, you may have already seen some of those. For example, your, your uh, NPS uh, logging in the event log is going to look different. And so the reason that it's looking different is because in the authentication flow, you've got a couple of new DLLs that are um, that MPS has loaded and they're now in the authentication flow. So they change uh, what the requests look like at, at some point during that um, process. So if you go into custom roles, go into server roles, go into network policy and access services, these are your typical NPS logs. Now, down inside of here, you've probably been looking at these for a long time, and you may be seeing things like this. So what happens is, you know, the DLLs um, write their own event logs. So when you see something mentioning third-party DLL up here, you're going to have to go down into the Azure MFA. Typically, the Auth Z DLL is one doing the heavy lifting, and it's typically the vast majority of the requests are going to be down inside of here. So that's the first change. The second change is when the, the MFA extension being in the authentication flow is, um, it's, it's only, it, it, prevents the processing of anything but access requests. That means when an accounting request comes in, it's dropped, it's just ignored. So you won't be able to do any accounting against this NPS server. Um, a workaround for that is to uh, proxy through another NPS server and let that other NPS server that doesn't have the MFA extension installed on it handle your accounting. Um, and so with relation to this, one of the things that happens is because we have MFA in the equation now, in the middle of what is normally just an NTLM authentication to a domain, now we've got MFA that takes place. And that of course changes quite a bit about the behavior of your NPS server. So where you may have always been using these uh, vendor specific attributes they're still there but 
because of a, a change in this behavior, in some cases, those attributes may not be being sent back to your Radius client, and I want to show you why that is. So let me show you some of the tools that I'm using, first of all. I'm going to be using NT Radping, which is a very rudimentary um, Radius test tool. It's been around forever. I've obviously got my authentication client here. This is running inside of Android Studio, so this is just a little Android VM. Um, and on the MPS server itself, I'm running Wireshark, so we can look at the radius traffic and see what's actually going on. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, NT Radping. I'm going to use my user, whose primary authentication method in this case is just the Authenticator app. And let's watch the radius traffic uh, move through here. Did I not hit the button? Let me try that again. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we can see, I get my pop-up here. We've got the request that came into Radius. Radius performed primary authentication against the domain. Reached out to Azure for MFA. MFA is now being performed. And Azure comes back and says, you're good. And we send back the access, access accept. And we can see down here in my um, Radius packet, I can see my vendor specific attributes. So everything looks pretty normal. This is what we would expect. By the way, I'm filtering everything out here, so what has happened in between these two packets is some traffic to your domain controller, some traffic to and from Azure, and then this. So just know that that's there. Okay, so this all looks pretty normal, right? There's nothing out of the ordinary here. Now I'm going to change this user to a different guy, Bob.Smith. And... Bob Smith is not using the Authenticator app. Instead, he's using SMS, which is what a lot of users use. Um, and so this is going to change the behavior because there has to be a mechanism in place to allow Bob to enter that uh, one-time passcode that he's received through SMS. And, the, and, and so... For that to happen, what we see is a request come in and then a challenge go back. Now in that challenge is a, a state attribute. And we can see here that state attribute. That's essentially a tracker. And now I need to change the password to be this one-time passcode because that's how it all changes after the fact. Okay, so let me let me walk through what happened there. When you send back an access challenge, this is what generates the pop-up because if you look in there, you can say enter your Microsoft uh, verification code. Uh, that's that gets sent back to our Radius client. <clears throat> This state attribute, which is this GUID here, is um, is essentially our tracker, All right? And so this is this needs to be maintained so that when the request gets when the when the pop up is sent to the user, the user enters their one time passcode, and then we send that back. We're still only sending a username and a password. This password now is no longer their actual Active Directory password. This value is actually the one-time passcode. So without this state attribute being included in this, it would look like a brand new um, request coming in. However, because this is not a brand new request, those DLLs recognize that. They, they recognize this is a, an existing a pre-existing request that's already gone through primary authentication. And so it sends that passcode out to Azure. Azure says, yep, that's the right passcode, and we send back an accept. But if you'll notice here, we don't have 
our vendor attribute. Well, the reason that we don't have our vendor attribute is tied back to the state value. Because we have already performed primary authentication, there is no need to go down into our network policy where the authentication happens. This is primary authentication. And if we're not going back down into our network policy to do that, then we're not going to see our vendor specific attribute and therefore it's lost. So when we send the response back, when we send back this response here, this access accept, we haven't got back down into the um, network policy. Um, so we don't see those um, vendor specific attribute. And so it's not included in our access accept. So that's the whole technical reason behind why these attributes get lost. So there is, I've created a workaround for this. Um, and the, it's, a, it's a script uh, that leverages con, uh, connection request policies to perform this. Because if you look inside of a connection request policy, you have basically some of the same capabilities as um, your network policies. The, the problem is that connection request policies cannot do usually the primary thing uh, customers need. They're typically tying this to a Windows group. And so without the ability to do Windows group lookup, you're kind of limited in what you can do. So the workaround uh, that, that I wrote is to change that functionality from looking up a Windows group to scripting a solution where the, the script goes out, looks at the group, finds all the members, and then populates this attribute here with all the names of the users in that group. So you get a pseudo functionality of group lookup, but what you're really doing is a script is going out, grabbing all those usernames, uh, adding the syntax in here to those usernames. And this is actually, I have another rule here. So this is what that format would look like. So here you, the, it adds a timestamp and then it, it adds some syntax here for each of those usernames. Um, I'll link to that uh, video here. So if that's something that you were interested in, you wanted to pursue, it's available. The uh, script itself is available out on GitHub and it should all be in that video. So hopefully, this video has answered one of the questions that may have been troubling some folks out there and help them get a workaround in place um, for this for this issue that uh, is caused by your MFA extension being installed on your MPS server. So if you got any questions, you know, stick them in the comments. Let me know. Happy to make some more of these type of videos um, and hope this helped y'all. Thanks.